welcome, it's Chris from Christopher Hole Training and welcome to this week's whiteboard presentation where we're going to be talking about do you have a healthy spine posture. Now obviously the aim of this is to understand a healthy spine posture and then we've got a few objectives that we're going to work our way through which is first of all to explain healthy curves of the spine so we're going to find out what they are. Then we're going to explain the benefits of those healthy curves and then finally to explain how to maintain the healthy curves of the spine. But before we get into that, I just quickly want to mention my social media platforms, uh, which you've got Christopher, uh, at Christopher Hole on Twitter, you've got Christopher Hole Training on Facebook and you've got Christopher Hole on Instagram. So you can come along there, like and follow. I share as much as I can with regards to health and fitness, not just about posture but all about health and fitness nutrition exercise behavior habits anything that sort of falls under that umbrella alternatively if you want to find out more about my correct lordosis 12-week program which is more than just a program it's not only got the 12-week program itself but it's also got workshops and tutorials that help you learn about it so you can better understand it which gives you more tools in your toolbox to be able to uh, correct uh, your lordosis. So coming back to uh, our topic today, do you have a healthy spine posture? Let's go and find out what the healthy curves of the spine are. So what we've got is with regards to our spine, I'm going to explain the, the whole spine in a second, but just to give you what your healthy uh, sort of spinal curves are, a normal lordotic curve is between 20 and 60 degrees. So that's the area of the spine at your lower back and at your neck. And then you've got a, a normal kyphotic curve is between 10 and 60 degrees. Now that's the big sort of curvature of your, of your upper back. So between your lower, your mid to upper back, between your lower back and your neck. Now what these curves do, they provide strength and stability to the spine. So if we had a straight spine, it would be less strong and less stable. So these natural curves give the spine that um, additional dynamic strength and stability. And one of the things they do is they allow compressive forces to be shared with the connective tissues and muscles located on the convex side of each muscle, uh, of each curve. So we're talking about, for the lower back, we're talking about the psoas, for the upper back we're talking about the traps there are other muscles in those areas but those are the um, those are the major muscles or the most significant muscles that are involved so when we are talking about the uh, the lordotic curve it's this cob angle this cobs lordotic angle that gets gets used to determine the 20 to 60 degrees so we've got here you've got the sort of the inferior angle of L5 here that this line passes across and then you've also got the inferior angle of T12 here. So what they do is in an X-ray you would uh, obviously have these lines superimposed or drawn onto the X-ray and then where the cross-section happens you then take obviously the angle of the two lines. So that gives you your 20 to 60 degrees. Now that's quite a big discrepancy so what it does show is that the spine is flexible, the spine is movable, and your healthy posture is flexible and movable. Um, because what this is doing is, if we just go on to the next slide where we're actually able to talk about the spine as a whole, what we're talking about is we mentioned the 20 to 60 degree curve here at your lumbar spine, and you've got another lordotic curve here at your cervical spine. So with regards to your lordotic, you want a 20 to 60 degree angle between the L5 and T12. So with regards to that, the curves, what the curves are doing is they're, they're flexible to accommodate a wide variety of postures and movements because what we do know is that our our body isn't static and our spine isn't static. So the, in, in a sense, the neutral posture isn't one position. It's, it's one position with a degree of movement to it. 
So if we were to have our spine in its ideal position, all the compressive forces would be shared equally. As we start to move, it starts to then share it slightly unequally, if that makes sense. But it's within the healthy range. And that's how we have to view our spine, is it's not one static posture. It is within a healthy range. And that's what we have to focus on, is that range. So when we are moving, when we are bending, lifting, carrying, uh, pushing, pulling, all those different types of movements that the body can do, what we're trying to focus on is the healthy range. We're not necessarily trying to focus on one posture. As the, um, as the loads get heavier during exercise or during everyday movement or sitting or whatever it might be, what we have to focus on again is the healthy range um, because as we lift our arms above our head, our thoracic spine is going to um, extend which is going to, in a sense, compress our lumbar spine and our lordotic curve. So a lot is happening throughout the day. But what tends to happen is if we tend to dominate one position, that tends to put um, more compressive force on certain muscles and certain tissues, therefore causing a hyperlordosis, which is the condition that we know as lordosis. So we get an exaggerated curve of the lumbar spine or we get an exaggerated curve of the thoracic spine giving us the condition kyphosis or the hunchback. So with regards to um, then treating those exercises, what we're looking at is daily exercises and, tr and stretches targeting the muscles involved. So for kyphosis we want to be focusing on s extending the lumbar spine. For lordosis, we want to be focusing on extending the uh, the 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 lumbar spine, and what that will, what that involves is the psoas muscle at the front. If you then want to involve the hip as well, because they are closely connected, it would be the iliacus muscle. With regards to kyphosis, you're looking at the muscles around the back: the trapezius, the rhomboids, the erector spinae group, and it's those types of muscles that we want to be. Um, uh, working on on a daily basis it's not just three hours of um, of exercises and stretches a week doing a workout it's there will be time for an extended period of time working out i.e 45 minutes to an hour but what we've got to be focusing on is the everyday postures that we're in so when we're lifting and picking a box up what's our posture are we within the normal range are we maintaining that normal range are we going through a series of stretches as we get up from bed, uh, from sleep? Are we going through a series of stretches before we go to bed? So it's 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 those types of things that we really want to be focusing on when we are treating uh, these curvatures of the spine or exaggerated curvatures of the spine. So we're able to maintain that healthy spine posture. So hopefully that gives you some better understanding of not only lumbar lordosis, but the other curves of the spine as well, the kyphotic curve at the thoracic spine and the lordotic curve at the cervical spine as well. So with regards to that, if you if you do think you have a hyperlordosis, then it's a good idea to get an x-ray. Find out if it's, if it's there. If you are starting to, or the curve is starting to change, then you might want to get involved in some sort of exercise regime which again gives you daily exercises and stretches targeting the muscles involved to to maintain the healthy postures and also to manage the curves and to improve the curves of the spine and it's exactly the same with lordosis um, you want to be making sure you get an x-ray done you then want to be focusing on the um, the muscles that are involved and then daily exercises daily stretches to, to improve them main, and maintain the, the, the postures of the spine. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more of an understanding. Hopefully you are able to understand your anatomy a little bit more and some of the, the muscles involved and some of the, the daily actions that you need to be taking uh, to be able to, to not only better manage your posture but also uh, correct it if it needs correcting. So many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from ChristopherHoltraining.com. I will speak to you in the next video.